Hello Tube Dwellers and welcome. I'm the Arcadian and this is Mabinogidio. Today we're going to be running a PvP deck based around this lovely lady here, Angel or Peria. This is a variation on a classic resurrection deck. It's been around since practically the very beginning. And it is using uh, the classic Angel or Peria minus one and Goblin Chieftain plus one. This deck has fallen a little bit out of favor with the more recent uh, booster packs, but it's still very effective. So let's go through it. First of all, you'll notice that we're running two resources. This is so that we can maximize our resource gain in the early and mid game, and uh, just make sure that we can bring out the Goblin Chieftain and Angel Aperia as quickly as possible. You can run a variant of this with three colors, but I prefer a more rush style myself, so we're going with two. First of all, we have Summoning Commission, a very useful card given that uh, Goblin Chieftain plus one has very high summoning cost. And then Forest Fire and Feathers of the Phoenix can both quite eat into your resources uh, around the mid game. So Summoning Commission. We're using Beautiful Prisoner Share plus one because she is a light one cost card at all levels and it's an excellent way of luring out any free summons, cocoon traps, stone curses or any other counters to Angel or Peria and Goblin Chieftain that you think that the opponents may have. Next we're going with Book of Knowledge. Now ideally with this deck you want to start second. That will allow you to play Book of Knowledge uh, on your first turn and immediately level up to two after that. Uh, if you start first, it's not a big deal, but ideally you want to go second. Holy Missile, a very simple uh, low-cost removal spell, and because darkness is so prevalent in the PvP right now, it's actually excellent value. And then we have two Feathers of the Phoenix, one gold, one light. This is so that when Orperia and Goblin Chieftain die, we have a really good shot of being able to resurrect them again. Next, Surprise Attack, again your standard low cost removal spell, nothing to say there. Forest Fire, excellent for clearing the field right before you bring out uh, Angel Operia to resurrect Goblin Chieftain back on. Then we have Night Invasion, if you have used Goblin Chieftain to flood the field and your opponents have tried to flood in order to block, you can simply use Night Invasion to clear everybody off. Then Goblin Chieftain plus one, of course, Angel or Peria minus one, of course, and the ultimate true Holy Spear. Now, this is, uh, if you can substitute any card in the deck, this will be the card that you can substitute. It, really, it serves two functions. Uh, the first is that if you're going to be playing this in PvP Arena, uh, this card will act as a name masker. If you don't have this card, Angel or Peria is almost always going to be your highest cost card, so the deck is simply going to be called Angel or Peria. Your opponents will know to counterpick accordingly. With ultimate true Holy Spear, they don't know what you're doing. Uh, you may have Orperia, you may be running uh, Demon Parnock, they don't know. So it's a good masker. And again, uh, the secondary sort of function of the card is that if your opponent is also running some form of a, a rush deck and they've managed to fill their field and you've filled your field and you don't, uh, either the uh, ambush isn't going to work um, or you just want a quick kill, you can cast Ultimate True Holy Spear. If both battlefields are full, it'll immediately deal 20 damage to your opponent, um, which, if you played well in the early game, is a guaranteed kill. I'd say it's not a crucial uh, card, but uh, it's fun. <laughs> so, let's head into the arena. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll write the current deck. Thank you. Okay. So we'll head into the arena. Now we're not going to be doing the PvP arena because that would just take too long to try to get up into Platinum with this. So we're just going to be running our uh, one versus one friendly duels. Uh, nothing really of any interest there for me. So no thank you. In the one versus one friendly duels, of course, you can't see your opponent's deck name. So ultimate true Holy Spears masking a function no longer works, but whatever, we'll keep it in. Okay, let's see how quickly or slowly we find one. Oh, wow, immediately. Good Lord, that's excellent. Okay, True Holy Spear, and we're going up against a Maori. Interesting. Usually, the heroes are a good indicator of what kind of deck you're going to be going up against, but Maori is one of those heroes that you can fit into almost any deck, really. Gold, Mana, and Dark. Now, there are two cards that she could possibly use to counter us. 
in mana and dark. She could use a free summon for mana and she could use a stone curse for dark. But she hasn't discarded anything, so we're fine. We'll play the Book of Knowledge, and since we've gone second, that'll immediately put us into a position of being able to level up next turn. Dolphin, okay. Interesting. So, mana resource generator deck? Is she trying to power up towards Anerva, perhaps? Let's find out. All right, we don't have enough mana for uh, gold, rather, for our goblin chieftain. So we're going to charge up once, and we are going to play summoning commission. Now she's going to level up next turn, so we don't need to worry about her playing any other cards and, and causing us any problems. So we put the summoning commission in there so that it will serve a purpose later on. Once she's leveled up, once she's built up some more resources, hopefully she'll summon a big creature, and we'll get enough resources off that that we can then cast in Forest Fire or uh, uh, Gold Feathers of the Phoenix or something like that. I'm going to play Goblin Chieftain in front of the Dolphin. That way we're guaranteed of being able to kill the Dolphin, because as you can see, two of the Goblins that were summoned only had five attack value, so that wouldn't have been very useful for us. And we'll charge up. Now she has a decent number of resources, so it'll be interesting to see what comes next. 666 resources. Hmm, bad omen. <laughs> uh, Mana Witch Xena. Okay, understandable. And it was a high enough cost card that it's given us a little bit of gold. That's nice. Now, Xena is one of those cards that you really do need to commit to beating. Hmm, she summoned the dead. Mirror of Nair. Well, that doesn't make any difference. We're going to kill all of those uh, creatures. Um, because we're going to take them all down to 1 HP and then they're going to vanish on their turn. We need to focus on taking care of which Xena, which we're going to do by you know, rather over committing on the resources, but it's absolutely necessary in her case. We cannot afford to have her start um, destroying our, uh, or hypnotizing our creatures. So, eliminate her right off the bat. Okay, and you'll see that the dead are about to disappear. Bing, bang, boom. Okay. Now she still has seven gold, so she could still do something pretty nasty to us. Goblin bomb squad in front of that. Okay. All right. Interesting. All right. We level up to three, and we can cast Orperia next turn. No problems. So the question is... We could use Night Invasion, but then we'd have trouble with Orperia. What I think we'll do instead is we're going to revive out of the grave, and that way we can kill the Barbarian next turn. Because on our next turn, our Goblin Chieftain's going to die. We don't really mind about that. But this Barbarian's going to start charging up its attack value, and we do mind about that. Are we going to use? Yeah, we'll use the Holy Missile. Magic Missile on... Yeah, that's fine. We don't really care because uh, we're going to be using Orperia to bring the Goblin Chieftain right back out onto the field anyway. So we'll fire off the Holy Missile. And because that takes us quite low down with the uh, light resources and we don't need any gold, rather than charging, we will actually start discarding our light cards in order to get us back up to being able to summon Orperia. There we go. And you can see we still have a goblin on the field who's still doing damage every turn. However, this is getting into the late game and this makes things dangerous for us. Uh, it becomes easier for her to counter, and it becomes harder for us to uh, flood. So, Orperia is ready to roll. We're going to drop the ultimate true holy spear, because we're just simply not going to be using it in this uh, battle, I can tell. And we will throw out Angel Orperia, who brings out the Goblin Chieftain, whose ability immediately activates, and now we have a full field. Now, she doesn't have light, so she can't uh, holy spear us. So at this point, she's in a really awkward position. Mana and Dark are both excellent resources, but they're not great for field clearing. Okay, that's fine. 
So she's using Xena and Shushu. Hmm. Okay. Well, that seems to be it for her, or Perry is going to land the finishing blow. We won't drag it out, we'll just uh, finish it off. So very interesting deck on her side. Uh, seems to be relying on flooding the field with dead on her side to support Shushu. And then using Xena as an alternative finisher in case uh, the opponent brings out something that you absolutely need to neutralize. It's something I wouldn't personally recommend doing. Uh, Shushu, Mirror of Naya, and Witch, Xena are all very expensive cards. Um, and the Mirror of Naya and Shushu sharing a color is not ideal. But it's still a very interesting deck. And it could have caused us some problems. That Xena in particular could definitely have caused us some issues. Okay, one down, one to go. Let's see. Getting a bit of lag there, never mind. All right, back into the dual mode. And there we go. All right. So while it's searching, uh, just to go over the general strategy of this deck, you've got to push the Goblin Chieftain plus one out onto the field absolutely as soon as possible. Once he's out, it doesn't matter if he basically suicides for any reason because you can bring Orperia out. If Orperia dies as well, that's actually a good thing. You kind of want Orperia to uh, suicide herself because once she's in the grave and then if the Golden Chieftain goes into the grave as well, you can use one of the Feathers of Phoenix. If it summons Orperia, her ability activates, which summons the Goblin Chieftain, whose ability then activates, who then floods the field. And if you summon the Goblin Chieftain uh, rather than Orperia, again, that's fine. He will flood the field. And if he's at, um, well, if you're at level 3 or above, then he'll be at level 4. And he has the ability at level 4 to completely flood the field just by himself. So... It's actually quite interesting. When you play these cards, you kind of assume that they're going to die and you want them to because it allows you to just keep cycling them back in again. If your opponent is smart enough to take out the surrounding units and leave uh, or Peria or the Goblin Chieftain or whatnot alone, that can be problematic. Ah, mana, uh, mono dark. Interesting. Okay, let's see. We started first, which isn't ideal, but we're going to use the Book of Knowledge anyway. That puts us into a strong position so that if she plays a creature, we can remove it with Holy Missile, and if she doesn't, we'll simply charge. Okay, she didn't, so we're going to charge. Now, if she anticipates what I'm doing, or if she's running uh, a deck that likes to petrify, then we have to be aware of uh, the Stone Curse. So we have to watch her discards very carefully. So far she hasn't done anything, and she's just bringing out the Grave of Grudges. So she's obviously trying to build up towards a massive uh, card, pretty much immediately. I'm going to assume that it's um, Summon Grim Reaper. It's unfortunate that we can't immediately summon, but we can't let the Grave of Grudges build, so what we'll do is we'll drop a Surprise Attack, remove the Grave of Grudges, and then it only gives her one Darkness, so we don't care. And we will drop the summoning commission into our grave so that if she summons anything big, uh, we can get some uh, gold off that. And if she doesn't, as she didn't, it's also fine. We can drop the Goblin Chieftain. Now, we are still in a bit of an awkward position because we haven't stopped her resource growth. So the objective at this point becomes... Oh, it's Beast, <laughs> Beast and Urigan. Oh, that's fine then. Okay, never mind. I think she was building up towards an ultimate that we would have difficulty uh, destroying, but honestly, the trick with Jurgen is to more or less just ignore him. Oh, okay, he's just going to use this. That's fine. So he kills, and then uh, he transforms, but honestly, we don't particularly care. So Jurgen's annoying, um, because it's going to... Basically, just going to keep uh, using that spell to deal damage to uh, me, but we don't really mind that much. All right, so let's see. Okay, so he does damage, and he'll get the ten through. Almost certainly going to use another ritual. 
Let's find out. Oh, interesting. Heavy offering. And Nightmare. Hmm. We got the Summoning Commission off, so it gives us a little bit more gold to play with. I haven't honestly seen a Nightmare Plus one with a Jurgen before. It's an uh, hmm, interesting idea. So Demon Calamus eats one of our guys. Yeah, I can see why they'd go with that. Yeah, very interesting idea. Hmm. Okay, we'll drop the... Hmm, what do we want to do in fact? No, I don't think so. We'll drop the Orperia in front of Jurgen to act as a... Well, actually... Actually, actually, what we're going to do first is forest fire, I think. Yeah, we'll forest fire because we actually want our, our field emptied. And that'll turn Jurgen back into normal so that she can't use a ritual to kill our guys. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Uh, all right, we'll drop an Orperi in front of Jurgen. Okay. Summons a Golden Chieftain back and then we flood the field again. Now... She can't bring a Calamus out onto our field, but what she can do is she can use a Ritual onto Jurgen, which will wipe out our side of the field. It's unfortunate, but so it goes. Yeah, there she goes, Ritual of the Grim Reaper. Oh, it actually does less damage than I thought it did. I thought it did eight, but of course not. It's eight in, in, in the guy in front. I'm woefully uneducated with Jurgen. I don't use him personally. I find him far too expensive for his cost. And if we were running a normal deck that had uh, you know, Cocoon of Evolution or something in it, then uh, Jurgen gets shut down immediately. Especially against a mono dark deck who has no counter spells. So she's in an awkward position. She has to kill my Goblin Chieftain plus one or my Goblin, and I don't think she has the spells for it. Yeah, there we go. So I mean, that transforms Jurgen, but it doesn't help her. Which means that we land the finishing blow. I mean, Jurgen's a bit of a pain, but he's not as powerful, honestly, as most people seem to think that he is. He's incredibly easy to shut down, especially for his cost. And I didn't even have any cards there that shut him down. He just got beaten naturally. <laughs> so... That worked out quite well. <laughs> All right, and we'll stop there. I think that's decent. We finish on beating a Jurgen, hooray. <laughs> and we will just take one final look at the binder and point out some possible substitutions. This deck is not really for beginners. It's not really a budget deck. It, it's not massively expensive, but it will put you back uh, you know, about a, about a million, really, if you're building it from scratch. Uh, more if you're going with the share. The Summoning Commission, you can switch out if you want to. I find that it's very useful against extremely high-value targets. If you are going up against somebody that's bringing out uh, Doom Machines and things like that, the Summoning Commission can give you enough resources to summon a Feathers of Phoenix or a Forest Fire or something like that. Still, if you don't want to use it, you could absolutely switch it out for something else. Um, lie Detector, if you wanted to take care of any potential counter spells, that would also be a good choice. The Beautiful Prisoner Share, I use simply because it's a one-cost card at all levels. If you don't have Beautiful Prisoner Share, then any other low-cost creature card will work fine. Um, I mean, it's not important that it always costs one, it's just that's very good for resource management. Book of Knowledge, I wouldn't advise uh, switching that one out. Don't substitute the Book of Knowledge. You need to get up to at least level 2 so that the Goblin Chieftain plus 1 can summon as many goblins as possible. The Holy Missile, Darkness is incredibly prevalent. Keep the Holy Missile. The Two Feathers of Phoenix, keep a hold of those. If you can't get a hold of the Mutant Light Feathers of Phoenix, you could double up onto uh, two Gold Feathers if you wanted to. Uh, the mana is just significant. Uh, the the uh, mutant is just significantly better because that way you can pick which resource you want to use to summon out of the grave. Surprise attack. You need the low cost removals. Just keep that. Forest fire. You could replace if you wanted to. Flame emission would be a perfectly decent alternative. Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise it. 
because the forest fire is really useful for just absolute field clearing. Sometimes you do want your own field to be destroyed just so that you can reset them with higher HP or higher attack value minions. The night invasion you could theoretically replace if you wanted to, uh, but it's very useful for clearing creatures away from in front of the summoned minions from the Goblin Chieftain. Goblin Chieftain plus one and Orperia minus one you absolutely need to keep. Uh, if you're working on a budget deck and you still want to try this, you can replace them with their normal variants, just be aware that it won't be as effective. And then the ultimate True Holy Spear, you can replace that if you like. As I say, I use it predominantly for masking, but it can also be very useful if you're going up against an ultimate user uh, and they flood the field, you can just immediately remove them all. It's uh, Vanish, it doesn't kill, so that means that if they're using tricky cards like White Now, the ultimate True Holy Spear actually just negates her ability because it doesn't count as killing. And that's about it. Uh, if you like this video, please leave a like below. It only takes a second, and I really appreciate it. And until next time, have fun, and good luck. <laughs>